Welcome back to the lab. In today's video, we're going to be preparing aniline from P-amino benzoic acid, also known as vitamin B10, via thermal decarboxylation. Now, the usual route for making aniline from commonly available OTC chemicals is starting from sodium benzoate, the food preservative, and then going through benzene via a high temperature thermal decarboxylation, and then mononitration, and finally reduction to aniline. But with this, all you have to do is start from your vitamin, which is also commonly available, and then just do thermal decarboxylation at a relatively low temperature to aniline. So overall, it's a much easier procedure. Uh, there's a lot fewer steps involved, a lot less reagents like nitric acid, you don't need that. So we're gonna get to this prep and I'll show you how to do it. Now I'm gonna be adding 80 grams of P amino benzoic acid or PABA to the flask. And you can see it's a lot of volume. This stuff is very low density, it's very fluffy. So we have to use 500 ml flask for this. I'm going to be adding it with a jointed funnel to prevent any contamination on or any particles getting stuck in the joint. I've added all of the P-amino benzoic acid to the flask, so now I'm going to raise the heating mantle and set up for a simple distillation. Now the 40 centimeter Liebig I'm using here is definitely excessive since aniline boils at 184 degrees Celsius. You really don't need much to condense it. So I could have gotten away with using a smaller Liebig, but my other ones are dirty, so this is what I have. Okay, so now we're gonna crank the temperature of the heating mantle and wait for this to melt. The PABA will melt at around 188 degrees Celsius. And as soon as that melts, it should start getting some aniline coming over, and we'll start collecting. This might take a while with just the heating mantle. Last time I tried this, I used flame, and that obviously went a lot faster. But now that I have these mantles, I'm going to be trying it with those. I can see on the edges some of the papas starting to melt, and you can see that I can actually see some little droplets forming on the sides of the flask, and that would be your aniline already forming. So the solid is pretty much completely melted in the flask and you can see the droplets of aniline forming on the walls and that's going to start coming over into our receiver shortly. So drops are starting to come over and you can see we're approaching the boiling point of aniline. There's definitely some water that, that came over originally because there was some low boiling point distillate at around like 100 degrees Celsius. So our, product, our powder is probably a little bit wet but that's not really an issue because we're going to be refluxing over potassium hydroxide and that will dry it up pretty well. So you can see if I move down a little bit, the reaction's going just well. It's all melted into like a tan brown liquid. All right, I just lowered the mantle so you can see the PABA decarboxylating. See, it's, it looks like syrup, like honey, I guess, boiling. Uh, the temperature was getting around 186 degrees. I want to keep it at 184, so I can just lower my mantle if it gets too hot, just to stop too much P amino benzoic acid getting over, which doesn't really matter since we're going to be boiling it over base, and that's just going to turn into salt, and then it's going to get trapped there. So really, it doesn't matter if too much of the P amino benzoic acid comes over because it's going to be removed in later steps, which is great about this synthesis. So here's the drip rate of the aniline. You can see it's coming over like a couple drops a second, and that's great. Uh, it's perfectly clear. It's not solidifying, so it's definitely not our starting product, which is great. The contents of the flask have solidified despite the high temperature, so that signifies the end of the reaction. There's still some aniline that's dripping down, but that's not going to come over unless I really crank the heat, which I don't want to do. I don't want to damage the flask or anything. So I'm just going to let this cool down and then dismantle the apparatus. Okay, and to the crude aniline, I'm going to be adding 8.5 grams of potassium hydroxide. Okay. 
and I'm also going to be adding a stir bar. And here I have 23 and a half grams of old aniline that I just had laying around, and I'm just going to reprocess it with this batch to clean it up because see it's quite yellow from being in an improper bottle and just aniline goes yellow over time from UV so I'll make sure to adjust the yield properly take out 23 and a half grams later and we're gonna turn on stirring and we'll let this stir for 30 minutes so you can see all those flakes of potassium hydroxide have broken up and now we just have a suspension so I'm going to turn off stirring. It's also gone in a slight pink color. And we're going to filter this. So using this new vacuum pump I got, we're going to do a vacuum filtration with the Buchner funnel into our flask that we're going to then use to distill the aniline. Okay, I've set up for distillation, so we're going to raise the mantle, and then we're going to turn on heating and stirring, and we'll get this distilling. This will be the final distillation. So the product is slowly making its way up the distillation head towards the condenser. The temperature is climbing. It's rapidly increasing right now at 150, still going up. Right now the temperature on the thermocouple is reading 187 degrees Celsius stable, so that's within error bars of this thermocouple, so we're collecting product. And here's our product. We ended up with 56.6 grams of clear aniline, and should be quite dry as well. Uh, that corresponds to a yield of around 65%, which is lower than my previous runs that uh, used flame instead of the mantles. But obviously the mantles are much better to use than flame because you don't want to be flame heating glassware in this day and age. But still, uh, it's still a pretty good yield. Definitely improves upon the previous method of using sodium benzoate. And the reason that 56.6 grams um, is such a low yield because we added the 23.5 grams earlier just to purify it. So that brings our actual yield from the 80 grams of PABA to around 34, 33 grams of aniline. So how can we be sure that this product is in fact aniline? Well first of all, its boiling point was in fact the correct boiling point for aniline and its freezing point, its melting point is also correct being at negative 10 degrees celsius but we can also do some chemical tests so if we add it to water you can see it's not really miscible, it doesn't dissolve that well however if we go ahead and add some hydrochloric acid it should dissolve by producing the salt aniline hydrochloride so if we just stir this around, and yeah, it's fully dissolved. So it's definitely basic, it definitely forms a salt, which is another plus towards it being aniline. And I have, in fact, used this aniline for a couple synthesis. In this beaker here, I have some crystals of bisquinoleum tetrachlorozincate that I made using this aniline. And as a matter of fact, there's another YouTuber, Cobalt Chloride. He's producing a video on synthesizing quinoleum right now. The video isn't out yet, but it will be soon. So you get to see that. And I've also made this ruthenium arene complex with aniline. See, it's a very, it's a, like almost yellow brown color. So, that's a new way for you to be able to synthesize aniline at home with vitamin B10. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.